Uh, hello. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just, uh... Hi. Thank oh. you. Thank you. Is it over? Because we just taped it. I saw the whole thing. His closing was very good. It's, it's, uh, he was very composed. Um, you know. Well, he was composed the whole way through. He didn't. He didn't. Uh, no, I he didn't he did. attack her. Considering who he who he is, I think he did a pretty good job. He had a good closing, though. He didn't and attack it was good her. Won the talk. She's a politician. She knows how to debate. He he's not a politician. But, he, uh, he's he's an anti-politician. He, oh, he's closed. He brought out. It had three. It finally. It had three and a half years. Why all of a sudden now they've got the mm -hmm. the answers to everything. What page are we on? Well, the reality is that ABC attacked him on every answer and That's not her. Didn't talk about anything. Well, how did he agree to going on that? How did he agree to that? Because <laughs> he doesn't want to look weak against her. Like he's afraid of her. Mm -hmm. never, never the other wondered, never CNN wondered. was very middle of the road. Did they ask her about how she can combat inflation? They never asked her that. Number one, the one of the top questions: How are you going to address the inflation, the high cost of of food? Wait, never, never, not all the hard stuff. They didn't ask her. He brought it all up, though. It, they they really this whole thing was designed to put Trump on defense. Everything, every question was designed to put him on defense, and to and and uh, give her the easy the easy ones. January six, he was asked about that, asked about all these things. Considering all that, he did okay. Look, we're prejudiced, but I think so too. <laughs> I think that this election is based on in Philadelphia and in Wisconsin, in a few precincts. They know exactly where they know where the election is going to be won or lost. You know, it's it's it's, uh... it's going to be a big showdown. Arab Rosh Hashanah. It's going to be interesting. It's Arab Rosh Hashanah, literally. What's Arab Rosh Hashanah? So the government has no budget after October first after September 30th. And right now there is a bill in Congress for a new budget. And that bill is tied to an, uh, the SAVE Act, which is gonna require the, uh, the federal government and all states um, require proof of citizenship to vote. And uh, Speaker Johnson said that uh, they will put that in front of Biden. And if he doesn't sign it, the government will shut down. Democrats are closing the government down. It was really and that good. that will happen. The government will shut down because Biden. That's will not good. Then it then it shows that the Republicans no. don't care about running the country. No, not true because they're saying, Democrats. "Hey, why why are they afraid of signing a bill that makes sense to everybody in the country? Shouldn't only citizens be able to vote? Maybe people just fly in all of Russia and let them vote. Think about it. I know, but I don't think it's ever done good for the Republicans to be involved in shutting down the government. People get checks, people, Social Security, Medicare. They Everybody will get Social Security. Medicare right. continues to pay. All the all those things, are, are, are everyone's going to continue to get all those things. It's just, it creates chaos. What, what is it, government of chaos? But the all those things will continue. Huh? What was that? All, all the essentials will continue. It won't harm any, any, anyone in the country. I told you when I went to vote at John Burroughs just a few weeks ago. Not a few weeks ago, the was last a, time. What was it in April, in March? What was it? So I took out my my driver's license <laughs> to show, they said, put that back. <laughs> Yaakov, did you hear that? I did. Yeah, they said, put that back. Wow. That's very wrong. We don't want that. We don't need. To, we don't. You don't need proof of ID. I said, okay. Well, let's go back and remember why the uh, the um, uh, NBA All Star Game was moved from um, what was it Georgia, Colorado, because they passed the law saying that you had to show ID to vote. That was considered. Um, I don't know what the Race, word is. Racist. Race, racist is the right word. So it's it's an upside down world. That's the problem we're dealing with in so many areas. That's racist. Yeah. Did you ever see Ami Horowitz's video on that? 
you know, Ami Horowitz, a graduate of... Uh, yeah, he, asked, he went to videos. black people and asked them, exactly. is that a ID? Said, no, we all have ID. What are they talking about? <laughs> they we said all that have the, ID's. Oh, that that what he did is he played back, he played back interviews of college students where, he, where they said that making blacks have ID is racist because they don't have ID. And then he went to Harlem that and asked so, in Harlem. So he showed he played them back the video and they said, That's racist. Why would you think we don't have ID? Of course have yeah, ID. because remember, Yaakov, this goes back to 1920s and 1930s, where yeah, there were asked, where there were laws that unless you own property, you couldn't get they, they, it was based on economy. Yeah, right. Black the, people didn't didn't have money and, and it did right. prevent them from voting. So it's a historical thing. It's a historical thing. Now it's just used to be able to claim it's racism it's used to remind books. them that oh it was once a racist thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a time where if you were black you had to be able to tell the registrar how many jelly beans there were in a jar. And if you didn't do that, you couldn't <laughs> vote. I, mean, I actually met someone in the case who who went through that. Really? But, so now it's just having ideas racist. You learn that on the lower east side. <laughs> What's that? Did you learn that comment on the Lower East Side? I actually met a person in, in a case that I had in Alabama um, who was one of the very few people, Black people, who was able to vote. She was a very high-class person, and in the 30s, she was able to vote in Alabama, and she told me about how that was the test. Um, that They showed you jelly beans, wow. and they said, yeah, you know, how many are there? And if they said... Well, pick the number. I said, no, can't vote. Terrible. So that's the way it was. But now, of course, just showing a driver's license, like Ernie said, put it away. You know, we don't want to be accused of racism by asking you for a driver's license. They were, Susie, they, they got upset with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, because our names were on a roll from, because we're property owners here. Right. So I wanted to show, this me. It, it's yeah. Ernest Agatstein. Yeah. I, I thought... I need to identify. No, 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 no. So how how is it that maybe somebody shows up and says I'm Ernest Agenstein? Look, do you just let on a very different issue, but the same sub same question? Do you remember when you went and you showed a credit card? They asked you for ID. You went to Home Depot and you used yeah. a credit card. They asked you for ID. Yeah, yeah. yeah because Nobody they were concerned you were fraudulently using someone's right. credit card. Nobody does that anymore. It's never has it happened to you in the last five you know, years? Nobody even thinks about you know, this. You know why though? Mm -hmm. They have the cameras everywhere. Companies they have don't cameras want everywhere. <laughs> What's that? They have cameras everywhere. Yeah, but okay, so before the cameras, um, they the credit card companies do not want them to do that. They would prefer to take losses on bad credit cards and have people denied. Um, and, and that's, I mean, MasterCard and Visa pushed that to remove the requirement really? to show ID. Really? That's what I'm saying. It's a crazy world, yeah. I mean, it's something we have forgotten about, but it was a matter of course up until like five years ago. I mean, wow. everybody asked you for ID. Today, it doesn't happen. Nobody asks you for ID. What do you mean, Yakov? I have a I have an Apple Watch, and you it's a you pay my American Express, and you click it, and boom, and then you're out of there. Right. <laughs> you don't even have the time to no, show. <laughs> it only work if you unlocked it with your phone. Your Apple Watch unlocks with your phone with your face ID. Listen, whenever I send my housekeeper to buy stuff, you know, on Friday when she comes, I give her my credit card. I've been doing this for years. Nobody has ever stopped her or asked her, is that your credit card? It doesn't happen. That's true. Okay. We are in, we are on volume 16. Sorbo oh, Huh? Page two hundred seven. From page two hundred seven, we are we have been going through the tefillot of Shabbat. We we began we we began with Kabbalat Shabbat, and we talked about Mariv. And now, of course, after we say Shmona Esrei, and we finish by Hulu, we have something called. The bracha me'ain shava. The it's called me'ain shava. It meaning it's like a little bit of the of a seven bracha because the amida on Shabbos has seven brachas. The three 
you know, the three introductory brachos, the three concluding brachos, and Makadish Shabbos in the middle. So we don't have 18, Shmona Esrei, we have seven. So this bracha that the Chazan recites after Vaychulu is like a little bit of a Chazoras Hashatz. That's why it's called bracha main Shabbat. Following Vaychulu, the Chazan recites a unique, a unique bracha known as bracha main Shava. One bracha corresponding to the seven. A bracha which more succinctly summarizes the seven brachot of the Shabbat Amidah, similar to a brief version of Chazor Sashatz. The Gemara Masech the Shabbos makes reference to this bracha which is recited on Shabbat evening and at no other time. I would venture to say that most, Susie is here learning this with us, that most women are Bechlal not aware of this bracha because most women are not in shul Friday night. Now there are exceptions. I will tell you that where my daughter lives in Ranana, in the main shul there, there are about 1500 people that come to shul Friday night, half of them are women. The 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 uh, Ezra Snoshim, which is a balcony, is full Friday night. So 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 there. But I would say here, I, I don't remember uh, when a last when a woman has been to shul in, in South Africa. In South Africa, they always came. To. They came. To, I was told that too. But in Israel, well, maybe that's why if Ranana has that because there's a huge South African community. This is the bracha main Shabbat, right after Vaychulu. Oh, okay. Now, the times that our wives are there Friday night, example, on Yom Kippur, Friday night, we don't say the bracha's main Shabbat. Friday night, that is Shabbos. <laughs> Anyways, the Gemara makes reference, which is Rosh Shabbos evening, no other time. The Gemara goes on to explain that this is not a formal tefillah amida, but was instituted as a safety measure. Domarava. Yom Tov Shechalios B'Shabbos. Let's say the first day of Pesach or Sukkot is Shabbos. Shliach Tzibur HaYoreid Lifnei HaTeva Arvis Eino Tzorach Lahazkir Shal he doesn't have to say in the tefillah yontiv. She elmali Shabbos and shleich tzibur yored arvus biyomtov. If it wasn't for Shabbos, the shleich tzibur we're talking about mentioning it in the main Shabbat. If it wasn't for Shabbos, the shleich tzibur wouldn't recite it on yontiv. Hasam bedinu da fil b'shabbos nami lo tzorich. So yeah, the Gemara answer is really a Shabbos does it's not required either. The Chazal Chazar Sashatz usually is not done at Myriv, on any Myriv. Rabbanu the Dakino Mishum Sakod. Chachamim instituted this because of danger. Now, what what danger are we talking about here? Rashi clarifies that the Gemara is indeed referring to the Bracha Main Sheva. Mention some of the text of the bracha. And Rashi clarifies what we're talking about here. Is the bracha main shava koyne shemaim vo'aretz mogen avos bidvaro. Now, what is the nature of the danger which motivated Chazal to institute this bracha, and how did the bracha help to address the danger? On the basis of Rashi's further comments on this Gemara, the Taz in Archaim explained that Chazal sought to lengthen the whole prayer service so that people who came late to Myrith or Kabbalah Shabbos would not be left behind to walk home from the synagogue alone, which was dangerous in those times. You had bandits, highway robbers, right? The Taz says, Neskanim Shum Sakonis Mazikin. The shuls then were in the fields. The This bracha main shava 
was established for the people who came late to Shul. They would finish their Shmona Esrei later than everybody. The rest, she Simut Filos and Ba'od Shashlech Tzibur Marech. So if it wasn't for the Shliach Tzibur adding this extra thing, the rest of the Shul people would have gone home. And now these late people would finish alone and they'd have to walk home alone, which would be a danger. As we have seen, the bracha was specifically operative within the context of a shul. <clears throat> and it's recited by a shlech tzibur. And as its text clearly shows, the bracha resembles a sort of chazor sashatz, the repetition of Shmon Esri. Therefore, it is not recited by an individual praying alone. And that's codified by the Shulchan Aruch. The Ramah agrees, noting that the congregation and someone praying alone may recite only the portion without the formal language of a bracha. Says the Ramah, if the Yachid wants to say something, you don't start off with the Baruch HaTor Hashem Lokeinu Melcha Yilom, and you don't conclude with the Bracha. What's more, the Bracha was instituted specifically, so for example, we the Shliach Tzibor, we only say Magen Avot. The Chazan says, Baruch Atu Hashem Elokeinu Elokei Moseinu Elokei Avraham Elokei Yitzchak Elokei Yaakov Hakei Lagadol Gibor Beanoi Ro Kel El Yom Konei Shamayim Vo'aretz. That's the Chazan's piece. We don't say that. That's what the Ramah meant. That the Tzibur doesn't say that. That's the Psicha, which only the Chazan say. We jump in in the middle and say, mm -hmm. and then the concludes, concluding Kiddush that the Chazan makes is also the, the Chasima, which he says by himself. That's what the Ramah means there. This bracha was instituted specifically in the context of a synagogue where people would consistently gather to pray. Accordingly, the Rivash writes that the bracha is not recited even when praying with the minion, if the minion is outside a synagogue. That's why during the COVID minyanim, most COVID minyanim did not recite this because it was not considered a permanent minion. Or if you're davening on the street, like during COVID, when you know you gathered there, the Magena vote wasn't recited because of this din of the Rivash. Let's say you're at a Sheva Brachas. You're at a Chassan's house where they're doing Sheva Brachas and they have a minion there. Oh, you wouldn't say it. The Beis Ovel. Well, we don't daven Shabbos with the Beis Ovel, But I guess there were times where they did. And if there was a minion in the Beis Ovel. That's on Shabbos, they would not recite the, this Brocha Ben Shabbos. This Takana for this Brocha was only done in a shul where people would go home from the shul, and we were worried about the people, stragglers who would go home late by themselves. So the Takana is for them, it's not for the Tfilis Mayru. It's for Tfilis Myriv in a shul. Shayu akol boin shon v'shay se besonim v'lokam sakonis mazikim v'chenem mekatshin v'mavdilin sham. Similarly, many shuls, erev Shabbos, make kiddush in the shul for those guests that are traveling. They also make avdala, but this meaning of saying kiddush and avdala is not made in a temporary shul. We also shorten things in those minyan. So the rivash, following the rivash, 
the Shulchan Aruch rules that we do not recite the Birchos Main Shava in the house of a groom or a mourner. Although the circumstances surrounding the original enactment have changed, we continue to recite the bracha as it was originally ordained, specifically in a shul. We don't have the same reason. The Mishnah Brura sharpens the distinction between a synagogue and the house of the groom. He explains, even in a minion, <clears throat> in an informal setting, does not usually qualify as a synagogue for the purposes of Brachem and Sheva, though under certain conditions it may attain that step. We're talk, when it says we're talking about they're davening in somebody's house with a minion. The kosher came osan Somebody who in where there's a minion occasionally had a minion in somebody's home. But if it's a kviyadik a minion. The Yeh Sefer Torah Etzlam, Ukomo Biridim, like they used to have these markets, fairs. Doimel the Besak Tesos Kavu of Oimrin. So I'll give you an example. Kilat Yavna, we daven almost every night, Minchan Mariv, at the home of one of our Balabatim. And it's ever it's Kavias. And we have a Sefer Torah there. I would venture to say, Based on this Mishnah Bura, if for whatever reason we ever davened Friday night there, we would probably say the Birchos Main Sheva based on this Mishnah Bura because we fulfill these criteria. So if that's the case, you you might say uh, the COVID minyanim that went on for months was a, uh, also a Makam Kavua. Yes. So yes. then you would say the same thing. But remember, Bernie. I'm like in Jerusalem where my son lived. We would go outside on the street and everyone would stand in their doorway. I wouldn't con I wouldn't consider that a, a muck. That was, remember, everyone was on a balcony. You, you didn't gather in a specific place. Now, I'm not talking about when we had the tent and we daven there as a, in a Hanami or in that courtyard. That would be a Mokam Kavua. No question about it. Right, Bernie? I don't know about if you're in the street, my riv night, like Motsi Shabbos, uh, like in the morning they would go to their minion, but Motsi Shabbos they would gather on the street there. I'm not so sure that the Mishnah would hear, there's no Sefer Torah there, right? Because the Mishnah mentioned the Sefer Torah. Okay. Rabosha, as you'll see, doesn't require a Sefer Torah. We'll see that in a minute, but he okay. doesn't. According to Mishnah Bura, then, the Bracha Main Shev is recited at an established minion in a set place, at a de as determined by a proper arrangement and presence of a Sefer Torah. Rav Moshe writes that the status of Kviyas that permits for said Bracha Main Shev is determined by a minion that meets regularly, regardless of whether there's a Sefer Torah there. In a Hanami, I've seen that as well, where if the minion is a regular minion, uh, at somebody's home, even if it's not a Sefer Torah, every Friday night, you'd say the Bracha Main Shabbat there, according to Rav Moshe. If Yesh Loima Bracha Main Shabbat below Shabbos, the Mokam Shein Sefer Torah, he was asked, Ubeis HaKnezes Kavul at Filis Mar B'Shabbos, Vav Mokam Kavul Vaisech HaTzrach Lomer, Bracha Main Shabbat. He says right away, if if a house has been designated as the place where people daven Meirev, in young Israel of uh, Century City, people live very far from the shul, deep into Beverly. There are many of these house minyanim. It's too far for people to walk Friday night. They daven in these minyanim, the same house every night, every Friday night. But what That's happens it. if you daven in the house and you and there is a safe Torah in the house, but it's not, not Kavua on a Friday night? He's saying it's got to be a minion Kavua, because that's based on the Mishnah too. And I think with Moshe's going to... It's not based on a safe... Like a He's also, I think it's... Oh, I have no have to do with the Sefer Torah being oh. present. But Bernie, it the, uh, the Beverly Wood Minion is, rotates once a month a different house. So I don't know how that's Kavua. Yeah, but if it goes back and if it's the same rotation, that that let's keep it simple. There are places where there's a Myriv 
Friday night meeting at the same person's house. So Rav Moshe is saying whether it has a Sefer Torah or not, that certainly would be a place to say Bracham Ein uh, the, What Chaim is asking, if it's three different people and they rotate every three weeks, but it's the same three, I would say that meets the Kviyas as well. I, I mean, I would say that that would meet the Kviyas regarding that. If it's a mool, you know, somebody, you show up somebody's house. I was like, like, for example, you're at a hotel at a simcha and you daven Friday night there. But it's not kvias. It's It will happen to be there. So that that's a question. I think that would be a more interesting question. Yeah. The afshe b'machzi sashekel uba prima godim and mishpat sozo mistapik the ancient sefer Torah, they, they had issues. That's why the Mishnah Brura said you need a sefer Torah because they were mistopic without a sefer Torah. Sheim kein ein lomer ledidei al kviyus to myr levado ein oagin kein ela oimri. He says that's not a it's not the custom to not recite the main shavu just because there's no sefer Torah. In Rav Moshe's time, the meaning was to recite it. We do recite it. He says he doesn't understand. What, what, what's the issue of the Sefer Torah? Why does that have to be there? Like Walter said, okay, by 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 tachanun, when falling on your head, we'll have to go into that. I think we went into it. Why you need the Sefer Torah or you don't. But that has nothing to do with this. One of the ma talia by talia. There's nothing to do with it. That's what Rav Moshe was saying. He doesn't understand what the Sefer Torah has to do with the Kviyas of the Minyan. Nowhere does it say that in order to have a Minyan to say Kaddish and to daven with a Chazor Sashat that you need a Sefer Torah. Minyan is a Minyan. Now, so that we see clearly the, the, the poskim are debating what kind of usage determines a place status as a synagogue regarding bracha main sheva. It seems like the dominant custom in most places is not to recite it at an impromptu minyan. However, the accepted custom in Yushalayim is that it is always recited, even outside any kind of regular synagogue or designated space for tefillah. As the Piskei Tshuva writes, it's due to the elevated sanctity of Jerusalem. It's almost like they're saying the whole city of Jerusalem is like a base a, a kavua dika base knesses, right? He says in Jerusalem, may it be rebuilt. Nahub mikademes, it is an early custom. Do not loy marmein shava afilu b'minyan she'en kavua vein sham sefer torah. Even an impromptu minion. Achyesh omim. Shemin kavuot tzarech kam yushalem. There are those who disagree and say you need a you need an established minion. V'rak sefer tor ain't sir. He kedushatash of yushalem chashuva kamokam sheish bo sefer tor. Being in yushalayim is like being in the place where there's always where there's a sefer Torah everywhere. Does that extend? To Walter's question about Tachanun, that perhaps anywhere in the environs of Yushalayim, based on this, I would say that you would do Nafila Sapayim on your on your arm, even though you were in a shul that didn't have a Sefer Torah. That's what we should ask Ravosh. I'm going to send Ravosh Weiss an email. <laughs> that I, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> based on this Piskit Shuva, is very interesting. I don't think we saw when we were learning the dinim of Takanun, which we've learned already, that they mentioned a distinction of, of the city of Yerushalayim by Takanun. Does anybody else remember that? So you can have some more eyes, please. Thank you. Rav Yechiel Mecha He was the famous Posek in Eretz Yisrael, I think he passed away in the early 50s. He's the author of the Gesher Achayim, which is the Sefer on Avelis, 
And he was also a very important posik in early, early Yishuv in the state of Israel. And he made a lot of contributions to the to the time, you know, uh, when is Shkia, when is all of this, Rav Yechiel Mechel Tuchachinsky weighs in on all of these things. He also so, has a very important ruling as far as the international dateline. And the dateline. All the all these issues with dates. I think we discussed him with when Rabbi Kuber, if you remember, we had a Mordechai Kuber, my my old Chavi from Rambam, he gave a shear. And yes, there's no question that Rav Yechiel Mechel is, is part of that discussion. So Rav Yechiel Mechel Tochachin Rav Shlomo Zaman Arbach agree in principle that the Baruch HaMein Shavah is recited in Jerusalem even when no Sefer Torah is present. However, they believe that the minion must be a regular one and that perhaps this rule applies only in Jerusalem's old city but not in the rest of the city. Wow. Shemir Shabbos Kilchasa, who was Rav Neuvirth, but he basically always quoted his Rebbe, Rav Shlomo Zaman. Uveluach Eretz Yisrael Magon Rav Yechiel Mechel Tuchachinsky. The Luach, right? We, we in America use Rav, Rav Yosef Eliyahu Henkin's Luach, the Ezra's Torah Luach. But in Israel, they, they used uh, Rav Mechel Tuchachinsky. Kasu, the Noagim Loim Rabbi Yushalai in Brachom Ein Shavu Gam Bayis She'en Sham Sefer Torah. So Rav Neuvirth says that it, it has to be a place where there's normally a kvius and davening. Only within the walls of the old city does this din apply that you don't need to say for Torah. Okay. So thus far, we have seen how the recent Ashkenazic poskim have dealt with the issue. Sephardic poskim debate whether the halacha today is in accordance with the ruling of the Shulchan Aruch, so that bracha main sheva may be recited only in an established synagogue. The Yalkut Yosef agrees with the pos position taken by the Piskei Tshuvos. Ein l'shliach tzuber loimar bracha main sheva ela ach v'rak v'beis neses v'mokam ha'kavuol etfilo. If you daven at an impromptu minion, you don't say it. The minig is to say the bracha everywhere, even without a Sefer Torah. And without a Kviyas minion. It's considered like a shul. And then he gives her aura. He says, you should only do that in the old city. If somebody is in a mourner's house, in a base of it, and they have a Friday night there, and it's in New Jerusalem, you have someone to be so Okay. The Ben Ishchai and Rav Mordechai Eliyahu rule that one should recite Main Shav in all locations due to the significance of it as a tefillah in the mystical tradition. Bracha Main Sheva, ein ikr tam shelo hu masham rabu sein zal. This is, so this is an example there's something called exoteric versus esoteric writing. Leo Strauss, famous philosopher in the mid 20th century, was a great student of the Rambam. And he wrote a famous book claiming that a lot of what the Rambam wrote, it's for the public, but esoterically he means something else. And Plato already wrote about this, and of course, many others, that sometimes the public is fed something 
but it's really not the complete answer. And the Ben Ishchai is saying the same thing here. He's saying this story that we were told, that this bracha is for the stragglers that came to Shul late. We don't want them to walk on alone. That was a story. There's a very mystical reason to say it. It takes the place of Chazar Sasats. See, so the Ben Ishchai says that no matter where you dive it, and there's ain't shem shleif for tochah yavin loy mer bracha make shab. Chen poshut from minig yushalayim, and that's why they claim the minig spread in yushalayim lo omro b'chol makom shem is palm basara. Avol pi shein shem shleif for tochah because of the kabbalistic reasons, not because of the the way the Ashkenazim learned halachically midina misay for tochah. That's a very litvish approach in terms of how they try to explain why yushalayim works. While the Benish Chai says, really, it's because of mystical reason. The Rashash is in the eighteen hundred is in the eighteen hundreds, nineteenth century, mid mid, I think. Commercial cost of a safer pre which I don't know what that is. And this was his practice in Baghdad, where the Ben Ishchai lived. The sources cited here discuss the possible difference between praying in a regular or proper synagogue and praying in a gathered menu or informal setting, such as the House of the Guru. This issue has always been relevant, not only for celebratory gatherings, like we talked about a wedding at a shul in a hotel, but also for Minyanim gathered when people lived far from the synagogue. Like we mentioned, various communities where people live far from the shul, or for the benefit of someone who's unable to walk to the synagogue. However, of course, this question gained universal importance at the height of the COVID-19 epidemic, during which synagogues were closed. Many people participated in Minyan in informal spaces and even in the streets with or without Torah scrolls. Regarding tefillah in the street, the Piskei Tshuva and Isha Yisrael mentioned that if an entire congregation or its majority is praying together in the street or in some other space other than the regular synagogue, according to everyone, they would recite Main Sheva. So this goes, we, were, we brought that as an example that maybe we shouldn't. Here they say just the opposite. Mordechai Willig rules that a consistent minion held outside the shul, but adjacent and belonging to the synagogue would also recite Berkos Ben Shabbat. So that would be the tenth minion that we had or the, the, the uh, courtyard minion that we had. We won't finish it, but we'll start learning about Shachras. What about eating before Shachras on Shabbos for men and women? Of course, we all have our own individual minyanim, Minagim, I as a Belzer, I, I'm a ancestor of, mm. I have Belzer ancestors, and they had a minig to always have a cup of coffee before minion. But of course, there are many Minagim where they don't, will not eat anything before davening. Before we study some of the sources related to the Shabbos morning feel itself, let us briefly discuss the question of eating before Shachras on Shabbos morning. We learned in volume 11, Shear 1, that although one is prohibited from eating in the morning before reciting Shachras, many poskim find justification to permit drinking tea or coffee for those who feel they need it. Does the same permission apply to Shabbos when it may be forbidden to eat or drink before reciting Kiddush? This issue of eating before Kiddush will be discussed when we deal with Kiddush in volume 17. The base, in the base Yosef, in his commentary on the tour, Rav Yosef Kari cites the Orchas Chayr and the Maram, that one is not proscribed from eating before davening, even without Kiddush, because no obligation exists 
to recite Kiddush before Shachlis. Kosov Baruch Hashchai B'Shem Arab. The Zacharni Shreiti Katsu B'Sefer Echad Shmatir Lishtos Afilu B'Shabbos V'Yontov. You're allowed to drink Shabbos and Yontov. For Lom Mitzvah, they should look Kiddush. Ah, you're going to say you didn't make Kiddush. We should call Shaloi Spadol Akati Lomati Zman Kiddush. Kiddush, the Zman Kiddush, at least Sunday, at least Shabbos in the daytime, you have to have Tefillah first. You have to have Shachris. And the time for Kiddush has not yet arrived. So therefore, you're not prohibited. And the Shulchan Aruch says, Beferish, Lishtot Mayim Baboker, to drink water, Shabbos morning, according to Tefillah's Mutter, the obligation has not taken effect. Both men and women are required to pray before eating in the morning. However, as we saw in volume 11, she or two, we sure post can differ as to whether she should recite the whole Shemona Esri and other main parts of the tefillah, or whether she must recite only a short paragraph of praise and request to Hashem. Moreover, we saw that women who are busy taking care of children or other household matters are exempt from reciting shachlis. These factors may affect the halacha concerning women on Shabbos morning as well. So as cited by the Isha Yisrael, a woman must also recite her tefillah in the morning before eating with the same exceptions mentioned above. Much like a man, ideally she should not eat or drink after she has recited her tefillah without hearing Kiddush. However, according to some post it's not absolutely necessary for her to wait for Kiddush. Let's say a woman, it's custom for her to daven every day. Or she has her own little tefillah. She is shvach pakoshev she can drink something before that tefillah. Like we explained above. Water, tea, coffee. Whether she has a mind to daven fully. Now, she has been yotze tefillah. Now, she can't even take water until she makes Kiddush. Those who rely on the Kula to drink after this little Tfila, even without Kiddush. If she has a mind to daven all of Shachris, afterwards she could eat or drink a little bit more um, to drink, I'm sorry, like a Lishtos, after the Tfila even if she's going to daven more. During the week, if it's medically necessary for a person to eat or drink before tefillah, one, of course, is permitted to do so. Does the same apply on Shabbos, such that when someone is ill, he or she may eat before Kiddush? Rav ben Sion Abashol addresses this issue and rules that one may eat without reciting Kiddush. Before we do that, I want to go back about the, she made, she has to not taste water until she recites Kiddush. This is based on the Minchas Yitzchak, but it's disputed Rav Shlomo Zaman Arbach and the Shmir Shabbos. They indicate that if a woman normally recites the entire tefillah, then she may drink before and on Shabbos, seemingly if she already mm -hmm. recited a short tefillah. This ruling is the basis for the more lenient ruling mentioned in the continuation of the Isha Yisrael here. Rav Moshe Feinstein adopts a third approach, that a married woman is at least partially dependent upon the status of her husband with respect to Kiddush on Shabbos morning. If he has already completed the tefillah, and therefore there's now a of Kiddush on the husband, then she may not eat, even if she has not yet recited any tefillahs. If he has not yet completed the tefillah, then she may eat. But not if she already has completed her full tefillahs. Once you finish tefillah, this, the issue of Kiddush comes into place. Back to the Shilas and Shuvas of the Orlid Sion. Adam should Lechol Kordon Fila Shachlis. If a person has to eat before Shachlis, Kagon Chola, Hayim Tzrech Lekadish Kordon Shiyachal. Does he have to make Kiddush before he eats, before he goes to Shul? 
Kiddush He doesn't have to. And he makes Kiddush like normal after he davens. Most Achronim, including the Bira Loch, the Mishnah Bura, Rav Moshe Feinstein, Rav Adyo is right, that if one is eating a full meal with bread or similar foods, and you're before davening, you should recite Kiddush first. It should also be noted that even one who is not ill may recite Kiddush after Shachlis and before Kriya Sator and Musaf. However, the Shulchan Archa Mishnah rule that one may not eat more than the size of a kibetza before completing Musaf. This will be discussed later. In Camp Moshava, there was a minag after Shachris. We went and made Kiddush before we laid and Davin Musaf. I don't know if anybody else remembered that in camp, but that was the minig in camp. But based on this Mishnah Brewer, you could only eat a kibetza because you didn't Davin Musaf yet. I don't remember them telling us that. Anyways. Uvivara Kiddush Bechoyle. A kolod has to eat before shachlis. Nir la nis daiti. Lachria, he thinks in his humble opinion, the imtzarech lechol pas, if he has to eat bread, afshu rak pas abobi kisnin, it's like mizono's bread. Sheyesh lo din pas bekvias, but if you eat enough of it, it would be considered kviasud. It's rak lekadesh. Kairasa mishta bura. Like the Mishnah Bura says, Bir Alochim, Sagila be Mizonus, but Mushalim. If he can eat Mizonus that is cooked rather than baked, that's better. Shabashum often ain't a bidin pas, and nobody holds that that's considered bread. If it's boiled, then lo yi kadesh. Then he doesn't have to make kiddish. Terebachai gav the blaya la kola shabbos rakminim elu. If he would only eat these kind of mizonos mevusholim all of Shabbos, yesh tam gadol shloy atzarech lekadesh, there would be a big reason why he shouldn't make kiddush. Bishum shlo yoyil, it won't help him. Lo nizbor kamagin avram, the yotzav gam b'minei targima, that you fill your obligation to eat a meal after kiddush with just like snacks, which replaces b'mokam suda. The yesh chokin alav. Because there are people who argue with that. So that's the reason why he says a cholik can eat them without kiddush. Kiddush, look at look at footnote twenty-two. Kiddush is effective only when recited where a person will be partaking of a meal, because ain kiddush el mokam suda. Rav Moshe argues that strictly speaking. Kiddush is not necessary to recite before eating foods that do not constitute a lachic meal in this context, including cooked foods. And then we'll discuss this more as it relates to the halachas of Kiddush later on. This is just a little introduction. Okay, we will continue with the order of the prayers of Shachras next week. Next week, we'll go back to regular